Hello and welcome to Mr. Clark After Dark, everyone. My name is Lucas Clark and I am a certified educator with Alberta Education and the Alberta Teachers Association. All conversations and interactions exchange is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. In no way does the content discussed intend to be in violation of the ATA Code of Conduct or meant to target any individual student, teacher, or to belittle or demean the profession in any way. If you have something that you would like me to discuss or have a story of your own to share, please reach out at lucasrdclark97 at gmail.com. You can also send a direct message to me on Instagram at Mr. Clark After Dark. Hope you enjoy the show and please do not forget to subscribe. And now on to the show. Hope you all enjoy. Hello again, all, and thank you for coming to part two of my episode with Christina Bueller. Uh, she's a French language arts and social teacher who is in her fourth year. On part two of the episode, her and I discuss imposter syndrome, what it means to improve as a teacher in our early years, how both parents and students interact with male and female teachers differently, the culture of negativity in teaching, and much more. Thank you all for tuning in. I really do appreciate it and I hope you all enjoy the show. Well, but anyways, how you were saying? I I I don't know what I was saying yeah. anymore. Like I guess just yeah. like upgrading. Um, oh yeah. And I I like being able to tell kids that I upgraded because it yeah. it makes them it ha- has them realize oh wow it like, takes the pressure off it does and yeah. I even found that I was having to like when I was doing my practicum there were some teachers who would say like like they would frown upon dash two and I was like well I'm like a product of dash two and. I went back and upgraded and there's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, like some kids just don't need to put themselves through it. And like, I don't know what dash one, like the changes dash one here at McTavish is so crazy intense and is not what I remember dash one being at all. I don't either. I remember, like, I remember when I first started teaching here for right after my practicum, I actually had to, I wouldn't ask someone. I said, what are the standard essays that you write in high school? Like for social, mm-hmm. like dash two, it's the th- assignment one, two, and three. And then dash one, you have the position paper source analysis. I I couldn't tell you that I remembered writing one of them. Nope. And, and I did social 30 dash two and social 30 dash one. And I almost found it hilarious that even when in upgrading, because I initially wanted to be a phys ed teacher anyway, I went on. But I remember in my history degree learning about things. And I was like, man, how did I not learn about that in high school? And then I get in here and I'm like, oh, I actually did. I yep. just wasn't thinking. Nope. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that you actually do go through that you're like, oh, okay, maybe. No, but yeah. Um, anyway, so shits and gears a little bit here. I'll stop All telling right. my my tangents. <laughs> um, so you're year four. Yep. Right? Year five is the golden number. I so apparently you'll be here forever. I, I, I will be here forever. I keep yeah. saying like, I keep telling myself oh i'll only be here for a few more years and then i'll move yeah. back down to like yeah. mid alberta is that what we call it now central Se- oh, i central, guess yeah it central is pretty alberta. mid though to use the language <laughs> i'm not a big fan <laughs> yeah. i'm not a big fan of edmonton i don't know what it is i i like calgary i lived in air for four years going to uc okay. whatever right. i live with my parents but like i just edmonton just feels like dingy to me and like elitist and i, I feel what? like i just it's don't changed. belong there at all I just maybe that's like a personal thing, but see, and like yeah. I feel the same way about Calgary, um, okay, but that's but, only because like when I moved here, Edmonton was so anti-Calgary that I I just adopted it. That's like, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Well, I almost find I am deeply steeped in imposter syndrome. I it yeah. has been a crutch for me. <laughs> like every day, I think to myself. Someone's going to walk in here one day and be yes. like, we're actually, we've been punking you for three years. You're actually an idiot and that you don't know anything <laughs> that you're talking about. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I knew this was coming. <laughs> oh my God. I I get that a lot. And like um, you had spoken to Nicole about this yes. too. And it's, it's something about products of like Francophone families teaching in, in French immersion where like we don't speak. French at home compared to most of our colleagues. Mm-hmm. So it's it's one of those things where like I'm convinced I'm going to come to work tomorrow and they're going to be like, no, um, 
I'm sorry to, to tell you, you're not actually qualified to do this. <laughs> so we'd like you to respectfully leave. Um, like, all right, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I knew this was coming. <laughs> and that's like one of the reasons like growing up, uh, I like when I was in grade seven, I was like, I want to teach French because I had two yeah. awesome teachers. So grade shout seven. Out. Yeah, I was kind yeah, of like Yeah, shout out okay. Monsieur Stéphane, Madame okay. Natasha, yeah. uh, Ontario, my last two years in my Francophone school. And I still email them sometimes. I'm like, hey, I'm doing this lesson that you taught me. And like, we, we still keep in touch. That's cool, though. Yeah, I like that. Because I would very much like that if yeah. my future students said that to me. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, so like I had, I would spend a lot of my summers out in Quebec. And so I would tell my family, because like I come from a long line of teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would say stuff like, well, your French isn't good enough to teach. And and that just like completely crushed me. And yeah. so I like threw that idea into the trash and I was like, oh, well, I'll never be the teacher I want to be. And I went on like a long line of different things. Like I, I nearly joined the army for, a, I know, I, I, yeah, I was a cadet for a long time. Wow. My dad was in the army. Um, but then again, like another person crushed that dream for me. So it was yeah. just, it was, yeah. So do you find, and I don't mean to like dig, cause I'm, very much a naturally insecure person do you have like a similar and i almost find because honestly one of the best things that i've ever heard about imposter syndrome was my i almost find when i was in university moving toward my first practicums i've never felt stressed like that of the anticipation of being exposed literally that was kind of the thinking so i remember asking one of my profs i'm like I don't know how I'm going to fill 90 minutes of time four times a day, every day. I don't know how I'm like, am I going to sound like an idiot? Will they actually, I don't know. So that was a, a general fear. Yeah. <clears throat> but I remember he said to me, when it comes to imposter syndrome, it's almost weird if you don't have it. Yes. It's like there, there should be, you should almost not trust people who say they don't get it at all. Mm-hmm. Cause those are the ones like, I think, imposter syndrome will make you better for it it does it'll make you a better in any profession anywhere i think having a piece of it will always keep you from settling it pushes to improve all the time yes so how have you been able to kind of make that transition um so like in university they like i wanted to teach in a francophone school because that's where i grew up Mm -hmm. i was like i want to be this for someone else but in university they kind of like scared it out of me where they were like well if you don't have a like a what's the word like a they call it maitrise but it's like if you haven't mastered this skill in french yet yeah then you probably shouldn't be teaching in a francophone school so i was like okay and then like i found mctavish uh and it was like quote unquote mixed immersion mixed francophone because back in the day we did like we we took in all the filter from Boreal, who yeah. are still considered Francophone. I, I don't think we do that anymore. Now yeah. it's like officially just French immersion. Yeah. But like I teach it like it's a Francophone school. Yes. You know, like which I, I feel like you yeah, should. It, it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, as it should be. Yeah. Um but I and I still have this like feeling like I I shouldn't be be here. Like maybe you know, <laughs> Anyway, it that's just what, but it pushes me like I on yeah. my like PG or PGP, yeah, P- growth plan, yeah, 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 yeah. my growth yeah. plan. Um, every year it's like keep improving my French. Like I, yeah. I read different books, uh, I like find articles online and and all this stuff of just how I can improve. Do you do any writing? Writing? Yeah. Um, no, I I probably should, but it's just like. What, who am I writing to? What am I writing? Well, it's super embarrassing, but I'm like... <laughs> you know, it's like journal writing? You keep no. a little... Dear diary? I'm like trying to write a book. <gasps> it's... No, I'm not even going to even... It's... I'll no, buy it. It's super... Oh my gosh. But it's, it's literally just maybe 10 years from now, whatever. But it's something that keeps me in like a... And I'll go a month or two and not touch it. But then I'll go into... I'll like restructure chapters yeah. and like sections and I, what kind I'm of a, I don't even want to talk about it. Oh my no, gosh, no, I love that. Well, no, because you, you read books like you read like five books a day, I swear. No. And so just imagine someone else on their little Instagram story sharing reading well, like Lucas Clark's book. <laughs> but I almost find I have this new need for long-term personal projects, hence the podcast. Okay. I don't know what it is about 
I almost find. I'm so glad you're doing this, by the way. I well, when it was it's just like fun. a little, little know, idea. Like yeah. And honestly, I said at a wedding two years ago, someone, I, I was in, indulging in some adult beverages uh-huh. and someone was made it like they laughed super hard. They're like, I've never seen a teacher get so whatever. And I'm like, Mr. Clark after dark. And Absolutely. so it was just, and they loved oh, it. I was yeah. like, you know what? Maybe there's something to that. We'll figure yeah. it out. We'll go from there. But I don't know. I have almost found that I really struggle with the negativity in teaching. What, like one which, of the, well, one which of the, negativity? Well, yeah. All of it. <laughs> Please specify. Well, and that's, well, that, yeah, honestly, that's kind of the exact point where I almost find my first, because I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of in my fourth year teaching if you really want to be yeah, no technical, I, I would consider you like years well, i absolutely. subbed for two years but yeah. it's just during my ed degree because it's online so like i had over 100 days subbing each year so that's not wow. nothing right so but if i had finished my degree and just started subbing people would consider me now quote unquote a fourth year yep. teacher so whatever and again the third fourth fifth what does it actually mean um but i find i just, <laughs> i just remember being bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Showing up on my first day, we're completely overdressed. Like you were just... the golden retriever in your face. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I'm like, so what do you like about teaching to someone in their 15th year? And they're like, oh, I hate it. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's, that's cool, man. That's the fear. I, yeah. I fear the day I wake up and I just like, don't get me wrong. Like some days I really dread coming to school because yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, Everyone does. It's, it's smoky outside. But I still love gross. what I do. Yeah. And I like, I love seeing the kids like excited and yeah. like I it's not a student of mine but like the other night uh, I was at a bonfire and like one of the one of the kids there was just like it obsessed with me drawing things for me and <laughs> yeah. I was like can you draw this and they would go well I, I don't know how to draw that yet but I can't wait to learn how so that I can show you next time and I have so much oh. stuff to learn and I'm so excited to learn them for you and I was like oh my gosh this is it <laughs> What, well, this is the teacher this moment for me. Um, <laughs> but it's still like, I love getting those moments. Yeah. It, like, even if it, you know, they, they're a bit rarer nowadays, yeah. but uh, that's what I, I love about it. And like, but is I, it rare? This is, okay. So this has kind of been my, everyone says teaching has changed so much in 10, 15, mm-hmm. 20 years. But the one thing I always say is that what you see as being the worst case scenario right now is just my normal. Yep. So I don't know. Is that a good thing? I think that's a good thing though, because it's almost like you. It's good, but it's unfortunate for us. But, imagine... but is it, does it kind of carry into the weird nostalgia of the past people have I in guess general? It does. Yeah. Like, is teaching really gotten that much worse? As obviously, I can't yeah. say because I haven't been in mm-hmm. it for so long. But again, you can get into the salary discussion, you can get into the. The extracurricular discussion, which I have like for coaching incentives mm-hmm. and whatever, hours work, days in lieu. It's a whole, that's a whole other rabbit hole. But I almost find when it comes to the negativity specifically, I just, I'm doing this kind of stuff to just tune everyone out. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and not in like a, and not in a negative way to tune everyone out. It's like, no, I just, we just hearing it. that noise, it's like, I just want to do my own thing. Absolutely. Because it. Cause it- Sends you in a spiral. Like my first year, even just like before I joined uni, Mm -hmm. um, my because my uncle teaches in in Montreal. Okay. So he had a bunch of his like coworkers back for their like pre back to work like barbecue type thing, and just all around the table it was just teachers complaining. Yeah. And I was like, whoa! And I had like a huge meltdown. And then one of his coworkers came down and talked to me and she is like the Montreal equivalent of what I do. She's the marigold. And <laughs> she was like, hey, look, like you're going to love it. And don't listen to them upstairs because, you know, they're bitter. They've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And she like she gave me the pep talk that helped me finish. And I actually get degree. like energized just thinking about that conversation. Yes. So I I don't know. I find it. I don't know. The t- I understand the root of the negativity and like the toxicity. Oh, and don't get me wrong. Like I sit around the table and I complain with and my coworkers. I'm like, Let's get into it. Yeah. I'm going to talk some shit. <laughs> but like, I don't think I would do that in front of a first year. Just, you know, because you still want to see the, the spark in their eye, yeah. if you will. And so, yeah. yeah, I try and around the first years, I, I keep my my negativity to a minimum yeah you know other than like yeah occasional no one's perfect i'm yeah. gonna have days where i'm like this is i don't know why i'm here i don't know whatever mm-hmm. but 
I almost find from my f- going into like year two, I mm-hmm. guess now, I've said my biggest observation that I've noticed about myself. I'm very introspective. I'm always like can think thinking about what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling and whatever. Mm-hmm. This year, I feel so much more at ease and having fun and almost even more engaged in the actual teaching part. But when it comes to like the marketing and stuff, I'm like, what's power school? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I've been keeping up with it, but I almost like one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was not everything you do in class needs to have an assignment attached to it. Like there's days where you yeah. can just do an activity. Exactly. And why do you need like a formative slip? that you have to go and then enter after. It's like, yep. why can't you watch a film without like doing a film study yeah. worksheet? Like, why can't it just be so, one of the things I've done, I don't do it every time. Like I watched Remember the Titans the other day with my social 20s mm-hmm. and they did a worksheet for that one. Um, but with my grade 12s, we watched Ants. <gasps> and because it, it's like a an individualism, yes. collectivism, like battle, like Absolutely. the internal battle of questioning the system and authoritarianism. And I said, if I see a single phone, I post this assignment. I love So that. it's almost like everyone puts the pressure on everyone else to not get the assignment. Yeah. So then they're actually like, let's just, and then they, because the goal for a film is you just want them to watch it. Yeah. And you want them to take away the message that you're seeing where you might have watched Ants when you were 10, but now you're watching it again and being like, holy shit, like that's a guy, that's like a yes. dictator. And like, he, like, it's the, like they're, they're, using fear of the outside to keep them in and it's all these themes like for liberalism and all that stuff is crazy but i know that's kind of been my big thing but have you i actually had that same thing uh i found out teachers use avatar yeah and yeah Yeah. and uh like another coworker told me that and I, i don't know how real or true it is yeah. but that it's it's like loosely based off of film like, yeah honey it is okay okay, I think, okay what's his name james cameron yeah yeah he did like a tour of and so, like, and watching stuff. it yeah. again and yeah. being like holy cow yeah it's it's insane I, I love like being able to watch something and just like taking away new things from it yep yeah and i even find because avatar is one of the literally the highest grossing movie of all time i think avatar 2 was i thought it was barbie Oh, you're probably right. I haven't, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked at the stats lately. Mm-hmm. Um, but knowing that there is even some form of local connection to that, I find the kids are just, yeah. it's especially, it's almost weird. Like we talk about Japan in grade eight as this isolated space, but no one ever talks about Fort Mac. Like we are isolated. Now yep. there's obviously more isolated places, but that kind of thinking is definitely still connected to it. But uh, is there anything that you've done? Because you taught social 20 last year, right? 10 I, and 20? Uh, 10. I teach 10? 20 like se- this year's second semester. All right. You teach yeah. English or French? Uh, French. Okay. It, it's a, I always teach French. I taught English like in my first year just yeah. because they're, I was new and they're like, yeah. let's see how how much we can get for yeah. rewards too much. So like one of the things I've noticed with social specifically is like, you can go and find like literally a book I read was reading over the summer. I posted a story on it. I remember a couple people messaged me about it. It was literally a story of Soviet orphanage cannibalism oh, where God. it just is just the most extremely graphic content. But then you talk about it in class and kids are like falling asleep. It's like, I almost don't understand like, is that just my imposter? Like, maybe I'm just boring. But now, is it, oh, like, how do you time. try to convey some of these most impactful and extreme things to your students to actually, because I almost find one of the main criticisms of teachers in general is like, mm-hmm. well, you should be able to make this interesting for me. Yeah. You should be able to, well, one, it's always a lack of personal responsibility yeah. to say it not, it's your problem. It's your fault if I'm not interested in this. But what are some things that you kind of did to maybe change it up? And like, honestly, if you only taught the course once, it's kind of hard to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because even now I'm in my fourth go around of most of these. And I'm still, I'm like, I don't even know how to change it up really. But is there anything that stands out to you for that? Like I, up until this year, I had taught like social aid a few times. And so I was able to get enough of a handle on it that I started to incorporate 
like little bits from reality. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be at some point when I'm teaching, I'm like, oh man, guys, these, this is so interesting. I can't wait to share with yeah. you. And then the kids who see that you're interested, they'll love it. They'll yeah. eat it up. And then the other ones will be like, you are the lamest <laughs> alive. And I get it. I, I tell them like, yeah. interesting for me is different for you. Cause I yeah. can read this like novel about like just the weirdest thing, but I, I have such an interest in it. Yep. And they they won't like I over the last couple of years like after university I really started to dig um, French indigenous literature where it wasn't like it it was it was fiction or semi nonfiction kind mm -hmm. of where they were retelling like their own story with like a little bit of editing if you will like I love that stuff oh and that's I, cool I was able to actually my like, first year like get a book on it for for school it's called I think in English like blue bear or blue spirit bear or so something. this is like editing kind of the eurocentric version of their history yeah that's cool i like that and like, see my interest I, I love it but, but then like kids they, they don't get it they're like well you know i'm not interested in this or like this has nothing to do with me so do you almost find that some of the concepts for social are almost like too high level thinking too early i do i do because like looking back on it some of the stuff I learned in social 30, um, I, I'm way more interested in now where I have yeah. a better like grasp of the concept yeah. than I did back then. Classical and, liberalism. Like I like... had a, a, a wicked good teacher um, and he played us oh, like a Beastie Boys song. Um, yeah. And he was like, this basically describes like this entire unit. And so yeah. we listened to that song on repeat and just like had a discussion about like what it meant. And I love that, that he was able yeah. to, you know, teach it differently instead of just being like, hey, well, here's what it is in the textbook and yeah. time for you to to write your hamburger essay. <laughs> he, he described it because, you know, you have your intro, which is the yes, bun yeah. and like the meat and the cheese. Oh, yeah. That's the yeah. best way to describe like how an essay know. should be structured. Because there's one that's like meal. But yeah, I find the burger graphic usually helps pretty mm -hmm. good. So you've been only teaching junior high and high school so far? Yep. I, oh, I I don't know if I'd ever, like, don't get me wrong, I love little kids, but I can't be around them every day. I I spent, I, I mostly summered at Mac Island Summer Camp. So I find ages 5 to 12, so it's pretty much 5 to 10 for the yeah. most part. Loved it. For sports camp? Oh, that's different. It was well, when the purpose is fun and okay, like you're yeah. kind of, they have permission to be silly. Absolutely. And it's, we used to just call it organized chaos where it was just like one year it was post COVID. So we just had a, like the shell place ballroom was our like oh, hub I love because it. we couldn't use the main, it was a whole thing. Probably wasn't sanitary, definitely wasn't sanitary <laughs> still. Um, but that was so fun. Being able to kind of see them in their element, but then to actually try to control these humans is, I even saw, because like we kind of get, into, you can, I don't really want to get into like the class sizes discussion because it's like, it's, well, it, it kind of ends where it starts. It's, yep. they're too big. Yep. We don't know what to do with it, nope. whatever. Um, but some of these classes in the junior high have like 38 to 40 where I remember I walked into someone's room and they don't even have desks in the back. It's like a fold out table with two chairs which is just insane to me but and i know in french you kind of get slightly smaller actually yeah, I, I can't significantly even, smaller i can't talk i can appreciate the struggle <laughs> but That's like my, my largest class is 38 and i think i'm gonna have something in the 40s next semester uh because right now the numbers i'm not allowed to teach okay allowed uh the grade 12s there's like eight of them right now so they can justify oh. giving me a classroom of eight. So I will be teaching a 20-1, 20-2, 30-1, 30-2 split all at the same time. Yay me. So at least I get to teach 20 this semester so that oh, I only really have to prep that? 30. I don't that is, know. So like, because it'll be different. Pretty much teaching grade 12 twice. So yeah, essentially is yeah. what I'll be doing. Uh, but I, it, it, that's fine. There are a lot of common themes between like ultranationalism and the like, oh no this, this is French communism. this is French oh no we're they're not doing that with social this year thank goodness oh yeah, whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. this is with FLA this is just FLA because oh. we were able thank yeah. thank 
thanks to Godzilla, yeah. Um, we are not doing 20, 30 splits for social anymore. Okay, that makes much. sense. It's too I much. But think... FLA, it's a smidge easier. Yeah. It's not the easiest, but there's like... no um, diploma for 30-2 in French so far. Please, crossing my fingers. <laughs> Alberta Ed, what? don't add a 30-2 diploma. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, like, they still have to write a final that I create, but yeah. there's no diploma for them. Um, Do you, did you grow up with standardized testing in um, Ontario? Uh, we have, like, I don't think it's called PAT or maybe it is PAT, but like, I remember grade six writing it and then in grade nine writing it, but we didn't have like a diploma. Well, I almost, I don't know if I'm wrong on this, but I, I get the impression that other provinces do government exams, but they're not as intense. Not, yeah. Not even as, yeah, I guess intense is probably the right word, but they're not as like, um, like weighted, I guess, toward yeah, your toward your overall outcome. Because you graduated twenty fifteen. Oh yeah, 50% yeah. So diploma, yeah, exactly. We had the we had the great fifty, and 50, then immediately five, after they're like, let's put it to thirty. And, and it was COVID, so it's like yeah, ten. I was like, cool. Um, but because I've actually had this before. I've, I again, this is my introspection coming out. <laughs> it's like two thought experiments that I've had of if there was no social studies curriculum set out for you for 10, 11, 12, and there was no standardized test, what would you teach your kids? Oh, my God. Right? I find... <laughs> Just history. I, yeah. I feel like they love that. Like, yeah. ev well, everyone, most yeah. kids love Social 20 because yeah. you're talking about, like, world wars and yeah. just history instead of just focusing on Canadian identity and, yeah. like, globalization. I know. I've done it again where I've spent way too much time on Unit 1 where mm -hmm. I've, like... Part of my, I wouldn't say maybe it's imposter, but part of my feeling of coming into a semester that I'm still learning how to navigate mm -hmm. is how am I going to fill up four months of material? Yep. So then I usually take my sweet ass time with the first. So this year I actually did like, I do two projects, controversial issues project and the heritage project. Mm -hmm. And like, we're not even into our first unit test. This is 10, right? 20. 20. Because you said over I the summer you know, were going to like tweak yeah. up like the world's best like yeah. breakdown of social 20. Yeah. So I yeah. taught it in summer school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I recalibrated a lot of stuff during that. Um, like some more like Ireland, Jamaica, Barbados as like case studies of yep. um, like decolonization. I find that was lacking. And the sovereignty, self-determination stuff I've done. I, I still need to do it. It's mm -hmm. like the Treaty of Westphalia stuff. I kind of want to get into that a little bit for the origins. But anyway. Yeah. I'll just that, follow you next semester. I'll be like, hey, what, well, what's going Well, I, I just found the first time teaching 20-1, I just didn't know how to fill the time. And I that's still a crutch with me. That, But then it's like as soon as I start teaching, I think, okay, I'll get through slides 1 through 35 today. Oh. And then I get through 4. Yeah, Because I, I just say. start talking and we start going. And I almost find one of the best quotes from... Garbuio, if if you want to listen to that one, um, he said nothing in this business is fatal. He said if you don't get through a topic today, get through it tomorrow. Yep. And so that's kind of, and I almost find even right now I'm not worried about being like, what does it mean to be behind? I don't know. I'll still have a few major essays in and a couple major assessments before mid October. Yep. So that's not nothing. Um, but that has been one of the challenges for me so far but i find that internationalism in unit three is pretty short too and but i almost want to get more into a let's discuss climate change let's discuss um global inequality let's look at um like what was the other ones i had i did have a list but more kind of overarching political issues mm -hmm. it's almost kind of the switching it back up um, but yeah, I do go through all the unit four stuff in unit one as well. That's kind of my change as well. But yeah. So I have a couple questions left to ask you. Right on. Okay. So uh, we did kind of touch on there. Like, did you have anything else to add about the education for how would you teach social if you didn't have a curriculum? Like, what are some things that you would uh, emphasize or focus on? And I feel like, like I've taught social and I, I, didn't go to school for it at all because mm -hmm. I knew like how stressful it was. And I wanted to, but I wasn't allowed to double major or yeah. double minor. Um, I did find a love for like junior high social. 
just because I love grade seven. You're teaching them about Canadian history Mm -hmm. and I can, you know, I don't have to go by the textbook. I can be like, hey, here's what the textbook isn't telling you. Yeah. Um, And then grade eight, like European history. Because you're teaching about the Renaissance, it's a lot easier to teach French kids about the Renaissance than I feel it would be Uh, like English kids. Hmm. Um, and then grade nine, it's harder. And I taught that for the first time, like well, two years ago, but I don't know, I, like in high school, it's not bad. It's just, I find that's a lot of essays and I already do that so much. For well, and I, I almost find, I guess kind of the reason I like the thought experiment is because I'm so kind of ingrained and in like, mm-hmm. this is what you do in grade seven. This is what you do in grade eight. This is what you do in grade nine. And like, I grew up pretty religious too. And so I almost had like, like the Protestant ethic of uh, not questioning and just kind oh, of do as okay. you're told. Yeah. You do this to get that. You do this to get that. You do this to get that. But I almost try to frame it as if there was no blueprint. What blueprint do you create? See, and I already have that with French because there isn't necessarily like there's like, here's what you should cover for like essay styles. Yeah. But like when it comes to everything else, it's it's up to me. I can choose the novels. Oh, okay. um, I can choose, you know, the reading comprehensions, film yeah. studies, uh, what kind of assignments we're going to do this week. You know, where that's nice. Like, though. Here's what so you need to evaluate, but you get to choose it? how you do it. Yeah. So I, I've added my own pizzazz to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like I, I wouldn't even know where to begin with social. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. I almost find, well, again, the same professor I had to talk with the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. One of the main things he emphasized was you can interpret the curriculum in two different ways. Yep. It's either as like curriculum as planned or curriculum as thing. So it's either you follow it related to issue one, two, three. Yeah. Or you can kind of see it as something to almost wrestle with. Okay. And that was kind of the way I like that he framed it, where he said, what if you don't want to teach unit one? What if you want to teach about democracy? Do you take outcome 1.7, 2.3, and 3.6? So you take that and you teach democracy. So it's not necessarily that you do them the okay. one issue at a time, yeah. but you're taking parts and like doing concepts that you like. Yeah. Like what if you want to... Taught, like it's kind of what you can 20-1 almost does it inadvertently where they're like genocide mm-hmm. that would be an example of a topic where then it's all a part of ultra nationalism so i almost find but it's kind of taking that extraction and creating a new concept like i like if you wanted to talk about um voting rights for grade 12 then you're kind of looking at it almost talks about like a through line question. So I I haven't done this yet because I almost feel I don't want to do it wrong. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so the main thing, and it's <laughs> it's been eating at me for two years. Not in like a bad way, but it's always poking me. Okay. That I'm not doing it. His main idea was that you should have a through line question for your course. So in grade 12, I've kind of, I've tried it, but it hasn't really stuck. So you have unit one, two, three, and four, right? It's ideology and liberalism. Those are the Mm -hmm. themes for grade 12. His main point was there should be a central question that you can relate all of the content to as you go through the entire thing. And so one of the questions I use was how has our conceptualization of freedom changed over time? So that's not a question in your textbook, but that's a question you can talk about every time Absolutely. you go through. And so I find I, I almost, it's like I forget to relate back to it all the time. Yeah. Like you kind of just get into it and you're like, oh, right, I had that question. I almost might start getting into like keeping it on the board all year and just, because that's how you, he said, because uh, another, maybe you have a lot of introspection issues. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to teaching critical thinking, he said, if you always have that one question up there, they're automatically making 
that association to that question. So you're almost kind of getting them into the rhythm of consistently thinking critically about what they're learning in relation to it. Rather than me lecturing, you hope for yeah. to retain. They're actually like making connections all the time. Now that's the, I don't know what learning theory that would be, but. Uh, what I love the most yeah. about your question is that it doesn't start with to what extent. <laughs> <laughs> well, and. But again, you're trying to keep it open-ended enough yeah. and abstract enough that there is multiple extents. But yeah, <laughs> I I know. I find even when I say that in conversation, I hate myself. I'm like, I've said this so many times that I don't want to do it anymore. But anyway, uh, so two more questions. Okay. Okay. Here we go. If everyone who's a teacher, educator, parent could hear you, if you had the mic... Yeah. And everyone was listening for one minute. And whatever you said had to be accepted as a change, what would you say? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Um, listen to your kids. Don't force them into French immersion if they no longer wish to be here because you think that you're doing right by them, giving them that French education. But when you're forcing them to be here against their will, they will battle against it they'll do everything they can to prove you wrong. And if they really want to be here, then later in life they'll find it like I did. I, yeah. I came back to French education. My parents never really like forced me to be in it. And mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that because it, it like created a better bond, right? Like I, I love like teaching in Kanye. French. I love like reading my French books. I love finding new French music. And I love like sharing that with students who like to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Thank I you. I like that because you're kind of a let them stimulate their own intellectual curiosity. Don't force them into what you think is the best version of intellectual Absolutely. curiosity. Okay. One more. Okay. This is how I've ended off all of them so far. So maybe you might have heard it. Education is what remains. That's very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Education is what remains once you forget everything that you learned in school. What are some of the qualities or values or lessons that you hope your students take away from their experience with you specifically? Wow. Like what is the difference of taking social 20 with me versus you? Social 20. Or not even social 20, just like just a like course in general. Course. As a teacher in general, what are just kind of the lessons like um, one Things said, I hope that kids take away. Yeah. Yeah. Just from their experience with you as an individual, as wow. a teacher. I hope that any kid that I've taught down the line will appreciate, oh, that's such a heavy question. Yeah. <laughs> what do I want them to take away if they forget everything about education? Yeah. So someone has said, like, learning doesn't have to be intimidating. Yeah. Know that I care about you. Um, stop one, comparing yourself to, to others. Stop like, comparing. Both, yeah. You know, you're not, you know, the other kid that you're trying to to be better than you're your own person and you get to decide that not your parents not your grades mm -hmm. uh just you you know like i i find so many kids are so obsessed about what their parents think of their grades and it can really destroy people like my sister was obsessed with her grades in school and obsessing she, about performance yeah, yeah and so she you know because like when we were growing up it was always like i was the one who was like better at academics and then when we moved out here i started to work to support my family and like i school definitely took like a back burner for mm -hmm. me and so she took that upon herself and she barely had a social life and she was just like obsessed about it Looking back, I, I wouldn't want that for any kid. I, kids should have social lives. They should be able to be kids while they can, you know? Yeah, because I almost find there's, even from when, like, I guess we were in high school, expectations have never been higher. Yeah. And I almost find that the higher our, and that might be one of the root problems that we kind of have as a culture is that the higher our expectations get, the more we resist those expectations and that might be kind of one of the reasons why we're seeing so much apathy mm -hmm. and burnout because oh well it's like apathy and burnout why is it that when expectations get higher we want to do it less it's because i think it's because we're, we're being told yep. to do it right and so the burnout question 
I guess like before, like what does burnout feel like to you? Have you felt burnt out? Oh, I, more, I definitely less? have. Like, and it, it always happens after like I get some really bad feedback from a parent who's hmm. just like taking out whatever they're going through out on me. Um, but it's like I feel like I'm not you know, doing what's right by the kids, you know, like parents really make you second guess yourself yeah. and it's just too much. And I start drowning in the work and like thinking too far ahead and kind of like make up for it almost. Yeah. Like you feel like you need to make up for it, exactly. things you're not doing almost. And so I go through this huge thing of trying to make up for whatever the parent was like criticizing me on and it, it gets really intense and I, I don't like second guessing myself and it's happened like just a few times in the four years that I've taught, but it, it was rough. Isn't that weird? I almost find, again, I don't want to speak generally about parents, but it's almost like parents now are almost ingrained in that Twitter culture. Like, where do you get the right to just spew this BS at me? Yeah. Right? Like I had a teacher or a teacher, I had a parent um, quote like the teacher code of conduct to me. And I was like, I... And what are we? I I'm aware of it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I, was like, for I I don't. You're taking this all out of context. Though. But but like the amount of blame and oh. like keyboard warrior mentality. Yeah. I will be honest. One thing I've learned so far is that being a man versus woman in this profession, with the amount of flack you get from students and parents, I don't think I've had a single bad encounter with a parent. Mm. knock on wood yeah but also students i think being a man in the room is compared to people who i'm very close with yeah who are women who are smaller statured and they just the amount of shit they get i'm like i've never experienced this that has been a you let me go down for a second and these kids will be on you yeah like flies it but you also you carry yourself really well like i at no point in the time that i've known you have i ever seen you <laughs> like look like you're doubting yourself or that you are anything <laughs> less than just prepped for life and um like they, i have everyone fooled yeah, <laughs> no, truly. No. but honestly like well maybe it's because again imposter it's like mm -hmm. i tried to I mean, everyone. Think it till you make it. Well, yeah, and, and every, but everyone struggles yeah. with perfectionism. I think to a certain degree, not extent. Um, <laughs> but I almost find it's like, if anyone ever criticizes me, it's like I already know that. Yeah. About myself. Absolutely. So I'm already trying to work on that. So mm -hmm. I don't kind of. It's like I know what my issues are. Yeah. And I know what my criticisms are, and I know what I need to do better already. Mm -hmm. So I always ask people for criticism, but I almost find. I don't know what else I should be doing. Yeah. So maybe that's like what kind of plays into where I'm, if I do carry myself in one way or another, it's almost like I don't know what else there is to do. So yeah. maybe I'm hoping my blind spots that I do have will be opened up. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, thank you. for saying that. Absolutely. Very nice, but yeah. Anything else to add for the Anything last banger add? there? No, I, I yeah. hope that parents, the French man. immersion program doesn't just disappear out of nowhere yeah. because I, can, I get through to all these parents and children. But yeah. Stay French, stay cool. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Bueller. Absolutely. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. Hey everyone, thank you all for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. Just wanted to say again, if there are any issues with professional conduct and or you would like to share your own story, experience, or have something you would like to contribute to the show, please do not hesitate to reach out at lucasrdclark97 at gmail.com or send a direct message on Instagram to at mrclarkafterdark. Hope you all enjoyed, potentially found something of use, and of course, please do not forget to subscribe. See you guys all next time. Unless you're scared.